time for the Assassin's Creed Odyssey review. Now, I finished my playthrough of Assassin's Creed Odyssey a couple days ago. I'm on a second playthrough currently right now. But I have to say, I, really, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. I really did. I mean, it had problems. A lot of games have problems. Most do, you know. But um, it, it was it's one really big issue that I had with the game. But other than that, I really enjoyed this game. And I got to say, go out and get it. I think it's a great game. Now, first and foremost, I just want to say one thing. A lot of people talking about this game, fans, lifelong fans, or long fans of Assassin's Creed. It's just a game. It's called a video game. It's for entertainment. If this is stressing you out that it isn't the way that it used to be, you need to really sit back and rethink how you spend your time and your life and what's important. I mean, it's just entertainment. And nobody's ever really trying to make a bad game. Nobody goes in to make a bad game. They might not be following all the rules and the guidelines and the paths that the game was on at first, but they're trying to do something different. People complained about how the games were stale and it was just a reskin of the same game over and over. They want to please them. You can't please everybody. They're going to come up with some different stuff. And plus, they're trying to keep the game fresh and make it evolve. But seriously, it's just a game. Chill out, people. I'm just saying this because this is how I look at most entertainment. We are too attached to our fandoms. We get upset, angry, mad, and pissed and everything. But the game's doing good with critics, video game critics. And it's also selling well, very well. They cannot please every single person who's like, I'm a diehard fan and we deserve this. Where there's people who also like the game like me. I've been there since the beginning. I don't like everything, but I like enough because it's just a game. On to the review. This game is fantastic and it's massive. It's bigger than I thought it was going to be. And I tried to prepare myself for how big it is because I've heard, I've seen uh, the people talking how big this game is. It's, it's, uh, it's, it can be overwhelming sometimes just trying to get a sense of am I going to visit everything? Am I going to see everything? Where am I supposed to go? Where everything? It is massive. It is big. And I like that. I remember finishing Origins in about 38 hours. And I was like, man, I really wish I had 10 more hours of the main story. I want story. I didn't want to do side quests that feel kind of empty. And that's one thing this game does. It has side quests that have narratives to them. So it's kind of like you're doing a story mission, even if it doesn't service the main quest story. But some of them do. They really does. The story of this game is pretty good. It's one about family, a broken family, and a family that's trying to repair itself. And that's where your main character comes in. They get thrown into this, this whirlwind of all this craziness happening, first civilization stuff, the history that we know from ancient Greece. And is their family also. So they're like trying to figure out what's going on at the same time, trying to make repairs and help people along the way. But the story is pretty good. It's not one of the best. There's been 11 games in this series over 11 years. So there's chances that there's other games with better stories. But it's definitely not one of the worst. But with this story, they have a lot of characters. A lot. I talked about how massive the world is. There are a lot of characters. You got characters like Socrates in this game. And just a lot of side characters or characters that have narratives to them that you have to take out. People you set up. It's a lot of characters, okay? And you might forget some characters. I've watched people play their live stream while I was playing it. And it was like, they were like, wait a minute, who was that guy again? I forgot. Something. It, it can be kind of difficult to keep up with all the characters in this game. But one thing they do about these characters in the game, they don't just want and done them. A lot of these characters come up again and again. They'll be in some side missions that have nothing to do with the main quest. Then they'll be in the main quest, they come back again later, and other characters meet up, so you're dealing with multiple characters that you met at one time, again and again and again. I really like the cultist system in this, because with all the cults uh, members, it seems like each character has a different personality. Some of them seem the same, because they might just be a sh captain of a ship, and they want to see you got to take them down. But they all look different. And have different things about them. So that was really cool. But I also like tracking them down. Occultist members. That was a system in this game I really enjoyed. But the story overall. I think the main story dealing with the main character. It was done pretty good. It got really good towards the end. It's really interesting. Especially when you find out who they're related to. Gameplay. The gameplay is fantastic. I have to say it is. Everything is good. Navigating through the world on foot. Horse. Or naval 
combat is back in the game, so you have your ship, using your ship to explore around is great. It reminds me of Black Flag and Rogue, mainly Black Flag, where just exploring is so cool because you want to see these new places, just being on the seas, the sea shanties are back, the combat, naval combat is just like it was in Origins, but I think a little bit better. There's a lot of improvements in this game. And there's there's a ton of items. Origins had mainly outfits, and you could upgrade certain things like your bracers or your equipment bag. In this, you can upgrade, and you have armor for helmets, chest armor, leg armor, boots. There's many different weapons. There's dual wielding fighting in this one, which I'm a stop fan of. I love that style, so I really enjoyed it. They switched it up. There's no hidden blade. Use this broken spear of Leonidas, who was your grandfather in the game. And it has some abilities that it comes with. You know, so it's a piece of Eden or an artifact from the first civilization. And it has some abilities. It enhances your speed a little bit. You seem to be stronger having it. And it has some area damaging effects, which come in handy because in this game you have these conquest battles. And it's like a mini war. It's kind of like the game battles from Syndicate, but a little bit better. It actually feels like a small scale war. Also, multiple enemies will run up on you, whether it's the mercenaries. I like the mercenary system in the game, too. If you do your actions, you'll get hunted down by people. If it's just a little unfair, they always knew where you were. If a mercenary was in the area and they're red, which means they're hunting you, you can be hiding in a the bush. They run right to the area that you're at and just circle around there like they could sniff you out or something like that. How? How? But either way, it was still fun. But the combat can get really overwhelming sometimes. You got a guy behind you, in front of you, and to the left of you. There's no shield in this game. They changed up the combat to keep it more fluid and fast-paced. I used the shield a lot in Origins, but I was a person who sidestepped more. I didn't want to stand there blocking and someone shoots me with an arrow from behind or hits me with a mace and knocks me down. That would get frustrating. So I always would be on the move. I would just do some like little quick hits here, move out the way, and do whatever damage I could to people. I've really enjoyed the combat in this game, and the powers that come with the Spear of Leonidas really make you feel like you got some devastating power, because in those conquest battles, it really helps out a lot. There's a lot of people around, or if you're just getting cornered by mercenaries and other people, you can use some of these abilities and it just clears out an area, makes room for you to breathe, set up your next attack. There's something that was introduced since Origins, and that's the level system. They go in a more RPG, action RPG route with these games, which I think is fine. I like the format. I really do, and I enjoy playing it. And the leveling system. I didn't mind it in Origins. I actually think it was handled better in Origins. Now, in Odyssey, they did something different. They Nobody in the game stays too far low behind you. Two levels behind you, so it's not too easy. But it is still easy enough to take those guys out. So that's not a problem. Everybody keeps going up, but they don't go up past you. They stay two levels behind you. My problem was when you're accepting missions, it opens up to three separate missions for that one mission just to finish it. The problem is if a mission is 35 and you spent time leveling up to get to level 35, once you accept that mission, you start doing it, it branches off into multiple missions just to complete that one mission. But it starts at 35, and you're level 35, or you might be 38 starting to do that mission. The thing is, those submissions in that mission, just to complete it, jump up massive amounts. Like, it'll be level 35 when you accept it. Then it opens up, and there's three missions, and one's 39, the other one's 40, and the other one's 42. It's like, hold on, wait a minute, I already did my grinding to get up to the level to finish this main quest mission. Now I have to leave in the middle of it to grind again to get up to a level where I can finish that mission. And that really breaks the flow of doing the main story missions. Because if you go somewhere when you're level 35 and that mission is a 40, two hits you're dead. Sometimes one really good hit was just too difficult to take them out, especially with the mercenaries too. They're very, very skilled. The AI in this game is very good. So anyway, the modern day story elements of this game they're okay. The modern day has took a backseat in these games ever since, I say, Assassin's Creed 3. But that's because Desmond is gone, and I guess they were trying to figure out what they're going to do with the modern day. Now, I enjoyed them because it was really entertaining, fun, and intriguing. And they introduced this new character, Layla, ever since Assassin's Creed Origins. She's cool, but she's not Desmond. I'm sorry. Desmond just felt way better as a character. 
Um, I would like to see them spend more time on the modern day, but a lot of people don't even like it anymore. They play it for the historical setting because the majority of the game is there anyway. Some people don't think the modern day should be just like the historical setting, going on missions. There's also people who say this is no longer an Assassin's Creed game, but really it always has been an Assassin's Creed game. There's been modern day in almost all the main games. All the main games had it, and it's always dealt with assassins and Templars, every single one. And just off of that, since it's in each one of these games, it's an Assassin's Creed game. You might not like it, you might not agree with me, you might not like what I was done, but they can use that. I mean, if you think about it, it always has been. Even if it's only two minutes of the game, it's in there, and that right there means that the game focuses on that. So anyway, that's the end of my review for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It really is an Odyssey. This is a really big game. It has a lot of things to do. Side missions have narratives to it. That's so good and welcomed addition to this. It makes it a little bit more fun when you're doing side missions. Although some people felt it was repetitive, going to always do errands and run errands for people, you're a mercenary. You start off the game as a mercenary. Now, if you evolved from that, that would have been a plus. But you start off the game as a mercenary. I knew we were going to be running errands and looking for anything to make monies or as a job. That's what mercenaries do. Like, seriously. I mean, like, what did people expect? The main character, Cassandra, I think a lot of people thought it wasn't necessary to have Alexios. If Cassandra's canon, why have a separate character? I think that was just for us. Just like the dialogue options. You can now choose different things. You can have romances. And you can do it different every time you play the game. I think that's really for the player. And it's not for the canon part of the story that goes on. Because this story is beyond video games. It's in comics now. Movies. Animated series. It's a lot going into this. But I think most of the stuff that's just for us people are taking way out of context thinking, how can you do this or do that? That's just for you to enjoy. The main overall canon story is in there, and they give you an option to play in, as Cassandra, who's canon in this story, not Alexios. Now, I'm playing as Alexios on my second playthrough. It's not much of a difference. It's not. I mean, there's a role reversal there, and but it's all pretty much the same. So it does feel like you didn't need Alexios in there at all. But just giving people the ability to choose certain things is still, nevertheless, fun. But overall, I would have to say, I don't give number ratings for my games. I'm just going to say it's a great game. Go play it. It's not my favorite in the Assassin's Creed franchise, but it is one of them, just because of the massive scope of this game. And it has a lot of elements that I really liked. Great game. Go get it. Buy it if you're a fan of Assassin's Creed. If you're not and you don't like where it's going, don't. You don't have to. The choice is yours. Leave some comments. Let's talk about this if you want to. I'm up for it. See you next time.